Hello, and welcome to another episode of Amiga Retro. Uh, today, actually, this was an unscheduled video, but then again, it's better than no video at all since I haven't had one for several months, which I do apologize, but alas, I am finally doing one. This is my Vampire Amiga 600. And as you can see, as I pivot the image, there is the nice 1080, sorry, 1920 by 1080 desktop with various applications, programs, <coughs> excuse me, or whatever else you want to call it. And, and, and the clock, because that's very important to know what time it is. Um, yes. Now, the issue with this, as I go back to the main unit here, it's working now, but the row of keys here were not functioning when I took this out of storage, I don't know, about uh, a couple of weeks ago, to my horror. Um, I reseated the ribbon cable um, onto the motherboard. It seems fine now, but I don't trust this. And since this is my uh, upper echelon of Amiga 600 computers, of course, be being vampirized and whatnot, I want to upgrade the keyboard membrane to something that is more reliable and I will show you what that is and these are available on eBay and I will put a link in the description so I'm going to remove this um, from the bench and show you the keyboard membrane of which I purchased off of eBay so I plug sorry as I unplug many connections take that out of the way find some place to put it and oh Make sure I don't drop anything. Ta-da! Well, kind of. What's really nice actually about this keyboard replacement for the uh, Amiga 600, you can also buy from the same vendor, um, it's really cool, the Amiga 1200 and 500 version of this, and what's needed, you can actually buy the one board that fits both the Amiga 1200 and the 500. Of course, being known numeric keypad and whatnot in a different form factor, the Amiga 600 one obviously is a completely different board. So what I like about this board, it's actually not like a flexible membrane. It's actually more like a printed circuit board. And I shall show you as I try, oops, as I move the camera several times, sorry about that. And I will uh, try to get this out of here for you by gently ripping it apart without breaking anything. Oh, oh. Ah, I wonder if a bubble wrap. Oh, look at that, shiny, very shiny. Too shiny, actually. Okay, let me try to get this out of here. Excellent. Remove. Come on, don't get stuck on there. Okay, I'll put it here in frame. There we go. Get rid of this crap. Oh, actually not that, I need that. So as you can see right here is the actual, kind of cool, sorry, board. So it's kind of um, like, it's not super rigid, like a printed circuit board, but it's kind of halfway in, be sorry, halfway in between like a membrane and a uh, circuit board material. It's like a, some kind of composite plastic stuff with all the available connections or sorry, contacts, which I'm hoping not to touch obviously because grease on the fingers and dirt, whatever. So of course, to install this, I need to take the Amiga 1200, sorry, the half, divide that by two, the Amiga 600 and uh, remove the keyboard and um, remove the membrane and install this. But it also comes with, if I can get this open without wrecking it, such confidence today. So there's the ribbon cable right here, as you can see, both sides. And so I set that gently down here. Uh, then there you have the connector. This is actually what plugs into the motherboard and attaches to the cable, sorry, the ribbon cable right here. So I will uh, have to get a pair of scissors to liberate this from the package. I will be right back. There, I have returned. Oh, oops, geez, ah, the tripod. I apologize for that. I hit it again. So this is the part that plugs into the motherboard here. And what's nice about that, this is unlike being the, the uh, You'll see it when we get it apart. The kind of ribbon cable that's actually on the stock Amiga 600 motherboard, this is much more robust and will not be prone to multiple, like, you know, insertions, reinsertions, and wearing off the very sensitive um, contact type material that they use on the original ribbon cable. So that will basically plug into that, like so. That will plug into here. 
and uh, we'll see if we're gonna get it to work. So I'm gonna get the Amiga 600 on the bench and take it apart. And the Amiga 600 has magically materialized before your eyes again. I'm pretty sure most people have seen how to disassemble these fine instruments. So it's simple, there's four screws. And once again, hitting the tripod, I apologize. I might put a counter in this video on how many times I do that. So there's one, two, three, and in the corner here, another one right there. So let's take this out. This is the longer of them. Don't get them mixed up. If you try to put this long screw through here, you will, well, horrible things will happen to the other side of the case. It'll come right through. That's two. And this one's a bit different than the other one. That screw seems to be, yeah, I'm gonna have to get a slightly different screwdriver for that. One moment. As I reach precariously over the tripod, but I didn't hit it. That's a good thing. There we go. It was enough to get it loose. Is this success? We shall find out. Tap, tap, tap. And one of the long ones, which went flying way over here, of course, trying to make a break for it. Uh, of course, the middle one is being resilient. And voila. So you flip it back over again, like so, and gently. You can remember with these, the keyboard, the LED strip here. So the, basically the power, hard drive, uh, uh, floppy disk access has a floppy light connector under here, right there. See, before you rip it off, it's enthusiastically unplug it. And then you have ye old ribbon cable, which is right there. And I don't think you can see it. Let me move the camera a bit closer. Maybe zoom in a bit with my fancy new camera. Okay, and there we go. Lower that down. Okay, anyway. You can barely see it, but there's the... Um, you can move this a bit more forward. It's always fun trying to get the right view for everyone. There we go. So there's the uh, uh, keyboard ribbon connector, which I will gently pry up on both sides, maybe, if it will let me or not. Okay. It's not... Ah, I hate this part. Usually I can do it with my fingernails. There we go. There's one. You can just uh, get my arm in the way. Sorry about that. Let me get a flathead screwdriver. I will be right back. And I am back. Flathead screwdriver. If it's even focusing on that. It's actually really weird with this pattern here. It's really close to this floppy connector. So I'll try to be very gentle with that. There we go. You don't want to, you want to unlock this because the ribbon uh, sorry about that. My arm was in the way all this time. My apologies. So anyway, I basically on the edges here, pop that up with the screwdriver. You want to do that because you, you can pull it out if it's under compression with that locked down, but you're going to wear, prematurely wear out the very fragile connections on the ribbon cable. Let me, uh, let me try to pull on that with a, because there, as you can see, it just popped right out. And I can take the keyboard off. Okay, and I can uh, zoom back out again. There we go. So now the keyboard is removed. As you can see, there is the illustrious Vampire 600 attached firmly with these two retainer standoffs and screws to the 68,000 um, slot. And just a quick rundown. Actually, I installed the high density floppy, which reads both double density and high density, as you can kind of read right there. And this is the Indivision um, one megabyte upgrade with the real-time clock added. Um, you can also add one of the ECS version two if you wanted to this as well for VGA output. But uh, I'm using my OSCC for no OSSC for that open source scan converter to uh, take the native Amiga video out and uh, I'll put it to HDMI. Yeah, but I, do, I digress. Okay, so now what we have to do is remove the keyboard which is really easy because it's actually clipped in here and then held in on, oh sorry clipped in here and here and then this bottom edge 
It's just where it sits in. So I should be able to, if I can do this on camera, gently pull back while pushing, and then it should somewhat remove itself. There we go. And I will, you know, yeah, so make sure you feed this wire here through here. Oh, sorry about that. That kind of went messily on camera. There we go. But there's the keyboard completely removed. And let me uh, put this before it falls on the floor someplace safe. Safe, I say. There we go, on the chair. Okay, keyboard, once again, tripod, that's probably count number, what, six that I've hit it? Sorry. Keyboard, and of course, the myriad of screws that I must remove. Now, the only thing I don't like about taking these out is they tend to sometimes pull some of the plastic out of them. I'm not sure if they put these in when they're still warm or what it is, like after they're being molded or something, because it can cause them not to tighten when they go back in, even if you do your best not to cross thread them. But you usually can tell yeah, if you know you see some black residue come out when you take out the screws. Okay, now let's see if I can get this on camera. So this somewhat more flexible connector here. This, if it focuses, can you focus? Let me turn this on one second. Continuous autofocus. That doesn't look very continuous to me. Come on, camera. Yes, it's very difficult to do this. One moment, can we see it there? Can I zoom in a bit? There we go, get my hand in behind it. Yeah, so I guess you're gonna have to look at it like that. Yeah, these connections here, they're almost like, a, it's hard to explain, kind of lead based there's some kind of contact on it but they tend to go bad over time and you can see there's actually some well, maybe not you can see there's some, actually some residual gunk showing up where the uh where the ribbon actually matches up inside the edge connector like i'm not sure how, how clearly you can see that but anyways we're going to replace this okay and i will be right back once i get this out of the way Okay, and now we shall take out the screws. And there are many of them. Yeah. Try to be gentle with them. Don't lose any of these. They're not easy to find. And of course, they're at that right length that they need to be for this board. So hopefully not too much plastic comes out. Be gentle. Uh, don't force stuff, especially when putting them in. Uh, it's always best because these are self-tapping, which means they don't, they were just drilled for a hole for these to actually grab on their own. Um, it's easy to cross thread them. They will tighten, but they will tend to wreck the, um, the, uh, the hole. So it doesn't grip as tightly when you go to tighten this. This isn't as bad as the Amiga 1200 board because of course it's larger because it has a numeric keypad. Uh, there are many more screws. I think they're actually a bit smaller than these ones are. So these ones may not be too bad. I'm trying not to get my arms too much in the way, but alas, I can't do too much about that. Uh, I will probably fast forward the rest of this part because of the excitement. Or not, because I'm almost done. Why not? Let's let's enjoy this together, shall we? Oh, uh, it's escaping. These are all the same size, so don't worry about uh, mixing them up or anything, obviously. And that's it. And now, remove. Okay. That's just a metal plate. Nothing special. But we do kind of need it to put it back together again. So I shall set this aside. Noisily. And there is the ribbon cable, the ribbon cable, the membrane right there. As you can see, it's, um, yes. So we will set that aside as well. And I notice on this keyboard, um, the LED for the caps locks. Let me see if I can zoom in here. That, I said zoom in. 
This camera doesn't have a huge amount of zoom with this lens, but it should be enough. You can barely see it, it's right here. There's these two very small contacts for the LED. They, so whenever you hit the caps lock, when I finally got the uh, this row, because this caps lock was on, remember I told you, the row of, of, of uh, keys that weren't wasn't working until I reinserted a cable, of course having to take the uh, 600 apart. Even then, when it worked, it was dimly lit. So I'm not sure if it's the membrane's fault or there's some dirt building up on these. So it might be a good habit to zoom out or zoom in a bit. So what I normally do is I take uh, some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip and I will clean each of these fun little carbon type connectors and not applying too much pressure and not spending too much time on them because you don't want to wear you know a lot of that off then they won't work so regardless of new membrane or not it's not going to make you know a complete circuit when you press the button so i will take a q-tip with some alcohol do all these especially paying attention to the led since it was like lit darkly when caps lock was on compared to what it should be or other keyboards that i have and once i've completed that i will be back Look, it's a bowl. Yeah, normally you have a small cap. Well, I, I guess I'm just going to show you what I do. I put some uh, rubbing alcohol in here so I can get the edge of the, uh, the Q-tip wet. And then begin the semi-laborious task of cleaning these. And I'll take the one in the center here. All I do is you simply take this and you gently, and that's it. And you can see you're not really getting any black off of it, so it's not going to do any harm. If you get a lot of black, I wouldn't really make a, sorry, recommend continuing. These seem to be a bit more robust. So I'll do the rest of these, especially paying attention to, might as well do it since it's here, the um, LED here, since it was a bit dark. Excellent. And I, I'll do that now with the rest of the keys, and then we'll, uh, we'll install the membrane. Yes, that's what we'll do. I will be back. Okay, I have returned. All I did was just using this thing here, uh, just one row at a time with the Q-tips and making sure no fuzziness was left behind and I didn't spend too much time on it. And none of them actually um, turned black or anything, so that, that's good. So I know I'm cleaning it without actually destroying it in the process. Uh, I'm also gonna use this uh, battery, rechargeable battery operated air blower, which I'm glad I got off of eBay. Sorry, I say eBay, Amazon. Uh, so that way you don't have to spend all the money on those uh, wretched cans that cost billions of dollars per can for air dusters and anyways when you use them consistently for more than 30 seconds they freeze up this doesn't do that now, it doesn't blow as much air initially but it's more consistent so in the in the end far better purchase and better for the environment question mark yeah of course it is <laughs> anyways let's uh it's also cheaper in the long run because those cans are of compressed air are horribly expensive so here we go i shall now I'm just making sure all the uh, the alcohol should all be dried off, and if there's any fuzzy stuff left behind, this should take care of it. So one, I will clean that up. Start pulling the screws off the table. Sounds like a vacuum cleaner, but it's not. This one literally blows. It doesn't suck. Success. That one is done. So that's clean, I'm happy with that. Set this aside. Okay, and now to do the membrane part. Uh, there are instructions with it, which is a bonus. Uh, let me see them here. Oh, you can hear me opening the instructions. How much you'll be able to read these instructions on camera, I don't know. But basically, uh, step one. Uh, this is a kind of sense of humor. Oh no, my cable is broken. Oh, I must fix it and then purchase and then fix. So there is a particular way that you have to put the, um, whoa, one second. Let me move this up without touching anything. That you have to attach this, because as you can see with this, um, the new cable, um, only one side's conductive, obviously, right? Got the blue part and you got this part so yes excellent looks like my camera's actually auto focusing yes so now i have to make sure you connect this correctly because if you connect it upside down it's not going to destroy anything but the, the keyboard's not going to work because there's no communication Oop. 
put my arm in front of the camera, sorry. Okay, that's gone. So following the instructions, um, I'll look over them quickly and I'll be right back because it'll just bore you to death. One moment. Okay, actually reading the instructions isn't entirely necessary because it's actually printed. Focus on the, it's upside down, isn't it? No, it's not on the board. This seems like having an issue here. One moment. The autofocus works. Yeah, it actually tells you that the blue side must be down. So that means we will uh, get the cable here. So this is the blue side. So if it must be down, it'll be down like that. And the way this connector is, trying not to get my grubby hands all over the other end of it here. Let me uh, zoom this in a bit. So I can figure out the lens thing happening here. There we go, it's a bit better. Maybe hold it this way. It has a, uh, it has lock tabs, as you can see, here, oh, and here, as I uh, pulled them out. And then I guess you would just insert the cable. So let me, uh, I'll clean this with alcohol. I'm gonna have to touch this if I like it or not. Okay, so blue part down which means I flip it up like this and connect this somehow into here like so that looks pretty good and then I think I'm gonna do this down there holding this in midair is not working out well uh, I'll be right back okay there we go I'm trying to work around my iPod my iPod what the hell's wrong with me my tripod uh, so hopefully I don't hit this. Let me get on the other side here if I can. Okay, so it says right on the circuit board that the blue side has to be down. See, there we go. <laughs> Guaranteed. There we go. There, there's the blue. So it's down. And we'll gently insert this into here. If I can do this. There we go. Now, putting pressure on this a bit, try to lock these side tabs down. That's these brown tabs. And you gotta kinda hold the other end as well. And it kinda wants to rock back and forth because it's one connection. There. So it's connected now. Sorry. And I, I get that in frame. So there you see. And it looks uh, it looks pretty good on that end. Hopefully the uh, first part went well. And there we go. Okay, and now we need to connect the other end of the cable to here which is the same idea so i'm going to try to do this without laying it down i don't want to get any dirt on those connections if i don't have to sorry um maybe i'll put it on here actually what i'll do is uh yeah i'm kind of all over the place here one moment there we go so i'll put this down here into place if i can it's uh, not backwards no it's got to be like this all those and then what i'll do is i'll uh if i can zoom in here again with the right direction oh tripod of madness so same idea it said it on the circuit board there it actually says right there that the blue side must be down as well um which is of course going to be like so because i mean there's the blue ribbon there tape i should say so same idea with the uh, the keyboard connection that goes to the motherboard. We're going to connect it into the membrane here. And I'm trying not to get in the way too much. So put a bit of pressure here. It's open. Grab that. Feed this in without touching anything. It said blue side down. Yeah, so it's down from this perspective. Okay, good. And then push that in. Okay, it's in, which is good. Um, there. Oh goodness, Ooh, now I'm almost perfectly centered. I mean, symmetry, life is all about symmetry, trust me. Okay, so same idea. I'm going to hold this in and pull down the one end, pull down the other, and make sure the other one, and, and then I squeeze on both. Because like I said, because that, that retainer goes all the way across, 
even when you're holding it and you push it down, it wants to pop up a bit on the other end. Then you just kind of go in from both sides and uh, put it down. So now it's, uh, it's ready. Now we just have to uh, put it back together. So we'll see how well this works. So we got that attached, that attached, and now I just have to put the back piece over top make sure all of this lines up because uh that's number 10 i think if if, if anyone's counting these uh, tripod knocks let me know if i'm off by you know a factor of 10 probably okay so i'm lining these up the best i can with the holes here and there oops so i'm going to attempt now the keys are pushing up so i have to bring up the keyboard now it all falls into place gotta make sure i don't put uh uh, yeah, there's the retainers there. So that looks okay. Maybe. So I have to try to start at least one screw to get this going. So let me try something central maybe. And I gotta try to make sure that I'm not cross-threading it. Okay, so that one went in. I got the nub there. There's a piece of plastic here that pokes through. Um, there should be other ones. These are just all screws. So that's like the pilot hole is there. Um, let me flip it over and check for other symmetry. Here, I mean, everything seems to be lining up. So let's see how this works. I'll put the rest of the screws in. Um, I won't bore you with that part. I will uh, put all the screws in and I'll be right back. Oops. Hello. I actually have a couple more screws to put in. Um, just to let you know. Um, actually, what I'm going to tell you about the, the possibility of uh, cross-threading these because, like I said, they were, you know, self-tapping when they were installed. When you put them in, I'll use this one here, rotate counterclockwise. You hear that? That actually fell into the hole. Turn it again. That's it. And then start turning clockwise. You want to feel the least resistance because then you know it's using the original threads and you haven't cross-threaded them because if you have to take this apart again, it's going to end up stripping them and uh, then the keyboard may not go together properly and then issues will happen again and again okay and uh same idea here yeah there you hear that oh too much resistance do it again counterclockwise and there we go not bad the whole thing is about not forcing it that one went in right in the first time Okay, anyways, I'll finish this up and I'll be right back. It's just a tip I wanted to pass along. And there it is, together. So now let us put it inside the actual computer. And hopefully it works. The proof is in the pudding. Must retrieve computer. There we go, computer retrieves. Okay, and get that sorted, whatnot. Perfect. Okay, and I'm going to clean the uh, edge connector off that I was touching. Uh, this one here to uh, make sure it's uh, nice and clean with some rubbing alcohol and a Q-tip since I still have some kicking around here somewhere. Which hasn't entirely evaporated yet for some reason. Or actually it has. I lied apparently. Okay. Clean that connector just to make sure it's good. Looks clean to me. Where's my compressed air or fan? That works. And just to be on the safe side, I'm going to spray in a bit of contact cleaner in here. Maybe I'll use the uh, the whatever you call that thing <laughs> i can't i don't know that's good enough and 
accelerate the drying process. These are definitely a worthwhile investment. I think it was like 50, 40, 50 Canadian dollars, something like that, or $2 US, whatever that converts to. <laughs> it's not quite that bad, but sometimes it seems like it. Okay. It's when I buy, when I buy stuff off of like Amazon US sometimes, because they have a much bigger marketplace than we do up here in Canada, that is. Okay. So it's ready. Here we go. Da, 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 da. Oh, that's not how that works. See, I'm so used to an Amiga 500. Or it doesn't work that way. I have to put it in the case. Silly me. Case. Now, I could put it in actually loosely, but I don't want to short things out and whatnot. So, what I need to do is hit the tripod for the 11th or 12th time. Put this... LED connector through here, uh, like so. This is being kind of stubborn. Got to be careful with these. They like to break off on the solder joints. This has been resoldered twice, I think. And uh, yeah, it's a pain in the butt. All for the cost cutting measures, I guess. Okay, make sure this does this cable here doesn't get caught up on anything. Well, I try to reinsert this getting all this in camera. This was an intentional tripod movement. There we go. Okay, let me... Kind of hard to do this on camera. It doesn't want to fit. It's off-center or something. No, it's got to be there. Yeah, let me... Uh, one moment. Let me do this where I can actually get to it here. It's being a bit stubborn. But yeah, I just got to put it in that bottom lip. Not like what I just did now. Okay. This is more horrifying than I thought it was. I will be right back. Success. Yeah, it required a bit of finagling, which I couldn't do off camera because you pretty much have to put it in, you know, angled in down through this lip here. And then kind of like when I took it apart, you got to bend and massage and coax and bribe and eventually it goes in but it's uh, no worse for wear so am i confident enough to at least i'm not gonna put all the screws in but i'm gonna at least button most of it up and see if it works so first thing though first is we need to this can come off actually uh, that's one thing we have to remove one second um because uh, this is a, it's basically a circuit board for the uh, the cable adapter from the keyboard, that has to come off. Which normally they like to break off most of the time, so hopefully I can coax this one to be removed gently with the screwdriver. Is this even the right one? Yes, it is. I can't see what I'm doing. I need more glass power, more magnification. Okay, let's zoom in on the action then. This camera with the lens doesn't zoom in a lot. Uh, I bought a zoom lens, but it's as good as it gets. Okay, so here I will try to remove that piece. I wish I can see it's right here. Gotta hold it. Of course, I can't really get a bit of an angle for the camera, but it's there. There's a bit of a clasp there. There we go. As you can see, if I can get it to focus there you go you see that you just have to pry that away with a with a flathead screwdriver of sorts and it comes off so now it's ready to accept the board which i will do right now by grabbing the keyboard itself i already cleaned off the connector that's already been sprayed and then let's uh let's put this in shall we and you don't have to bend it. How's this even looking? Uh, you can't see anything. Oh my business. I must go backwards. Backwards. That's not backwards. That is though. Okay, let's try that again. Yeah, so this will now plug into there. And I, I'm afraid I can't do it unless I'm straight over it. So trust me, that will plug into like Zoe. 
and you'll be just fine because unfortunately I have the cable's not long enough I have to get closer and the camera's not straight down you know what I'm saying you're not going to see it so I'm going to plug it in and uh, we'll give it a test okay so that's what it looks like when it's plugged in it's a nice solid firm connection if it will ever focus on that there's just too much happening for this camera it doesn't what should I look at I don't know whatever so yeah oops that was good for it but yeah as you can see there it is connected and we're gonna see uh we'll see how well this works out for the rest of us or for the computer i should say and uh i'll be right back so i attempted fate and i actually bolted everything center which put all the four screws back in knowing that i was confident on what i did and actually it looks like at least my caps lock button works or light and it's much brighter than it was before like it was at least half that and even then it would kind of flicker and dim and whatever but it would never be that bright or bright that consistently but what we need to do is uh put the amy test kit version 1.18 which is available i don't know if aminet has the most recent version but you can just type in amy test kit and uh, it'll be directed to a github link and you can download it so we're going to boot to this um because I mean, we can try the keyboard test via Workbench, but it's better if we use the software specifically designed for that to make sure all the keys work. So let me uh, insert the disc. I guess we should focus on the screen. So much moving around, I apologize. Let me uh, try to zoom in a tad, if possible. Screen, too lazy to get my screen capturing computer up and running, sorry. Oh. Okay, there we go. It's better than nothing. So I'm gonna put the disc in and I shall reboot. Take the caps lock off and we'll do a quick keyboard test. Oh, the glare, my goodness. Let me get that out of the way. Booting it is. Oh, I'm on the wrong input. One second, I'll fix that with my arm in the way, he said. Put it to input three. Hello? Ah, oh, it's nice when technology works. There we go. It would help if I hit the right key. The, there we go. That's the uh, the output that's really nice from the, it's actually coming from the, uh, the Amiga RGB output, going through the open source scan converter to HDMI, through my HDMI switch, blah, blah, blah. So I can switch between the uh, vampire HDMI output and of course if I want to play games or any software that just wants to use uh, the Amiga native output BAM there you go so we're gonna do the keyboard test which is my eyes F2 oh, look at that looks like a keyboard so let us um let me try to not get in the way of the actually I'm fine because you're looking at the screen so I can put my arm in front of the most of the camera so I'm gonna do it one line at a time or I can just do like massive key pressing. And there it is, the help key, uh, delete. Can't do the keypad, obviously, since it doesn't exist. And good, and the caps lock, you see it's on. Even tells you when it's on, it changes to white. And off, off. Now this is, uh, these key, this row always worked fine. Before I had to reseat that connection, there's enter. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ah, the excitement of doing this. There we go. I'll do the bottom one because it's going to be suspenseful. We'll see if the, uh, I'm pretty sure the other row, row will work because the caps lock is tied to it as well. Okay, and I forgot to do these two guys. So, here we go. Perfect. It worked before after I reseated the cable, but I, I said I don't trust it. And now I know this membrane will last probably longer than the keyboard and or, sorry longer than the computer and longer than myself probably so there you go what more could you ask for and uh, I believe that is about it my next video will be uh, it's obviously off camera the other Amiga 600 I have but looks like it's never been opened um, it's gonna be a recap uh, installation of the uh, the Furia 020 ECO 20 technically, and uh, the installation of OS 3.2. So it'll probably be three three episodes, one per you know the cap, then the Furia installation and review, and then the installation of OS uh, 3.2. Excellent. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, 
how do you rec sorry, recommend these membranes? You can get them for the 600, obviously, and the 1200 slash A500. They're, they, they're dual, those two, the 1200 slash A500. Um, if you need a keyboard membrane replacement, it is more expensive. It was around 65 bucks Canadian, but the whole point is it's a lot more robust. If you have to take these things apart, take out the cable, you're not going to do this, you know, the horrible damage to the, uh, to the, you know, very, very fragile connections on the original membrane ribbon cable. And that's it. So if you like this video, thumbs up. If you don't, if you didn't, for some reason, uh, you can do the, the other, the opposite and, um, subscribe, uh, notify the notification. So, you know, if I put out more videos, you'll get some kind of warning. If of course, YouTube, apparently they've been having issues with that system, but you might get a notification or not, but whatever, at least subscribe. It'd be greatly appreciated. And as always, thanks for watching.